Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'll talk about Hugging Face. Recently they released a um, uh, free and available to everyone uh, course uh, about Hugging Face and Transformers. And this will be the first part and they said that there'll be two more parts of the same course available in the future. The current one is focusing on um, Hugging Face model fine tuning and also there's a lot of um, background information explained about tokenizers and so on and so on. Uh, also, they explain how to upload your models to Hugging Face Hub. Uh, I went through this uh, course and I think it's awesome. There are, there's lots of useful information. And in the past, I had an example which uh, explained how to fine tune a Hugging Face model for <coughs> sentiment uh, classification. And <coughs> based on the information that I learned from this course, I updated that um, previous sample. And in future uh, videos, I'll post a few more hints uh, what I learned from, from, from the post. For today, um, I'll focus on uh, uh, a few cleanup of this, uh, on the cleanup of the previous example and a few more additional fixes. And yeah, let's uh, jump uh, into the action. And uh, here you can see uh, the course uh, which I was talking about from Hugging Face. And this is the section is uh, for the fine tuning uh, model with Keras. I highly recommend you to go through the uh, course, especially if you work with NLP. And actually, if you work with NLP, you, there's no other way. Uh, yeah, you, you, you should use uh, Hugging Face because this library is just uh, awesome. And uh, yeah, so let's jump to uh, my call up. And I took um, below the video, you'll, you'll see the URL to the previous example, and this is the updated one. I'll not run um, all the actions now in the call up because the training fine tuning step may take some uh, five to seven minutes, and I don't want to uh, just hang and, 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 and so on. I just will go through the steps and I'll explain uh, briefly uh, what this notebook is, notebook is about and how you can tune a uh, hugging face model. Actually, the one difference uh, between uh, example available in the course and my example is the data, because uh, uh, example in the course is using data from uh, uh, from Hugging Face uh, utility, whatever. But in my example, I use uh, external data that I just load from external URL, and this is completely like a raw data. It's not wrapped with any helper utility, just. Uh, uh, raw data that I uh, convert into the TensorFlow dataset and then I feed this data into the uh, fit method for training. Okay, so the first step you obviously, uh, if you're in a call up, you need to install transformers. And then um, you do imports, and here uh, you will see the thing which differs from my previous example. I'm using auto tokenizer and uh, TEF auto model. Uh, for uh, to get the model. And actually, in my previous example, I was using specific names. Uh, I was using uh, distilled BERT model and I was using uh, distilled BERT tokenizer and uh, distilled BERT uh, uh, model for sequence classification. Uh, it works It works great, but I, I believe it's better, way better to use um, uh, 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 those uh, auto tokenizer, tokenizer and auto model because in this way, you could reuse the same code, uh, no matter what um, uh, checkpoint you're using. Either it's um, uh, distilled BERT uh, cased or just BERT cased or uncased, whatever, uh, any, uh, any, to um, any checkpoint. And then you could just switch the, the name of this uh, checkbook, uh, checkpoint and you don't need to go and replace across your code all the uh, tokenizer uh, classes or uh, M model names and so on. So auto one is highly recommended. Okay, then I load data from external URL. This is completely raw data. It's not wrapped with any uh, hugging face utility. Then there's some basic uh, processing is done on data uh, split uh, into the training and um, validation sets. And there are 20,000 uh, sentences for training and uh, almost 7,000 for validation. Uh, then I'm using distilled BERT base and case checkpoint uh, because I, I tried a few. Uh, I was using uh, 
just bird based uh, um, uncased, uncased checkpoint, but uh, results were uh, not as, as, as great as with this, with, this, with, this one, with this checkpoint. So this is why I'm using this one. So if basically it, it, it delivers uh, better results. Then I'm getting tokenizer from this che che checkpoint and I'm using auto tokenizer. So um, auto tokenizer is smart enough um, based on a checkpoint that you uh, provide, it returns correct uh, tokenizer. Then I'm tokenizing uh, training and uh, validation sentences with uh, tokenizer, which I got in previous step. And finally, I'm uh, transforming all the encodings uh, into the TensorFlow uh, datasets. This would allow to pass those TensorFlow datasets in a simpler way into the feed function. Uh, in the next step, I'm getting the model using uh, auto model class uh, based on the same checkpoint as the tokenizer. And then once I got a model, I have two uh, sentences. One is uh, uh, with sarcasm and another one is without sarcasm. And I'm, doing, I'm calling predict function on, on the model with those two sentences and then printing out results. And you see that uh, both of the sentences are uh, reported as a sarcasm with uh, almost 51% probability. And I'm doing this just to show that after a model will be fine-tuned, you will get different results uh, to make sure that uh, fine-tuning actually worked. Okay, in the next step, we compile the model, and this is a standard thing like you would do with any uh, Keras TensorFlow models. You provide optimizer uh, Adam, which is standard, uh, learning rate, I was playing about a bit with learning rate and I found out that this particular learning rate uh, gives the, the best result uh, with this uh, checkpoint and with my data. Then we specify uh, spice, uh, sparse categorical uh, cross entropy loss. And uh, we, uh, when you work with hugging face model, when you fine tune them, make sure that you specify them from uh, logic true. Uh, because hugging face model uh, returns uh, logits and otherwise uh, there'll be strange results and you would not get any any value out of the fine tuning and we track accuracy so then in the next step we uh, fit we train the model and we shuffle um, training set uh, with 100 records and uh, we use batch 16 and run uh, three three iterations to train the model to fine-tune a uh, base model, basically. And you see that training runs on GPU, it runs fairly fast, and we get um, increase in accuracy and uh, loss is decreasing, and validation is, uh, accuracy is reporting uh, quite good results as well, so it means that training runs uh, properly in this case, and fine-tuning happens. Then just to test, I'm saving the train model, just to give it a test to see uh, if it works. Uh, to save it, and then I'm just loading the same model into another variable uh, using from pre-trained method. And then I'm uh, using exactly the same two sentences like uh, previously when model was not yet fine-tuned and calling predict function. This is the result I'm getting. that The first sentence is not a sarcasm with a very high probability 99%. And uh, the second one is actually a sarcasm with 90% probability. I took those sentences, the first one from CNN website, uh, from the news about Olympics. And the second one I took, uh, I googled the uh, uh, newspaper, news for newspaper articles with uh, sarcastic titles, and I got it from there. Uh, so these sentences, they're obviously, they're not available in training uh, or validation data set. I took them from the outside just to... Uh, give it a try and see if uh, model was fine-tuned correctly. Okay, so thanks for, for watching and hopefully this improved uh, sample uh, for Hugging Face model fine-tuning will be useful. And I think I'll record maybe one more video with uh, additional um, improvements uh, and optimizations for model fine-tuning based on what I learned from this awesome Hugging Face course. So thanks and stay tuned. Goodbye.